Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about the router auxiliary port. So far, we've talked about the console port and how it's used to physically connect to a router and a switch for administration. And routers and switches both have console ports. Well, there's another way to connect to a router physically, and that's known as the auxiliary port. Now, switches do not have an auxiliary port, so that's a main difference between, one of the main differences between routers and switches. So when you're, th when you're thinking about auxiliary ports, keep in mind these are for routers only. So let's start with a picture. This is the back of a router. And you can see we have a console port and two fast Ethernet ports. And just on the bottom there, slightly covered by the cable, you can see AUX. That is how the auxiliary port is identified. And here it is an RJ45 connector. Well, some details about the auxiliary port. Not only can it be an RJ45 connector, but sometimes it it's uses a different type of connector, and that's known as the DB25. It really depends on which router platform you're using, so this will vary. Likewise, the type of cable used to connect to the auxiliary port will change as well. If you're using an RJ45, then you will more likely than not have to use a rollover cable to connect to it. And take a look at the tutorial on the rollover cable if you haven't yet, but essentially the pinouts on one side are in the opposite order of the pinouts on the other end of a rollover cable. Obviously, if you're using the DB25 connector, you may need to use something like this, where you have the female to male cable, and that will enable you to connect to the DB25 port. Well, once you've connected the proper cable to the auxiliary port, what do you connect to the other side of the cable? Quite simply, it connects to a modem. So the modem connects to the, the auxiliary port on the router. And likewise, the modem has a POTS line on it connecting to a service provider. So the auxiliary port, in order to access the router through it, you dial in. You're using a modem connection. So you're connecting to the modem and then into the router itself. Let's take a look at a diagram to help visualize this. So here we have router A and its auxiliary port connected to the modem and the POTS line then goes from the modem basically to any telecom service provider. Remember a POTS line is just plain old telephone service so this is just a landline that's being used to connect to a modem. As for configuring the auxiliary port the options available to you are very similar to some of the things we looked at when we talked about configuring the console port and the VTY ports. So you would look for something like this, line AUX0 in your running configuration, and that would signify the auxiliary port configuration area. And these are just two example commands you can actually uh, use on the auxiliary port to authenticate a user, the login and the password commands. Keep in mind there are other commands available to you. Um, they're a bit outside of the scope of this tutorial, but there, there's more functionality available to the auxiliary port. Well, you might be wondering what what, what do you want to use the auxiliary port for? You can telnet and SSH to routers uh, via you know, a fast ethernet link or a serial link. You can even console to a router. So what's, what's one of the purposes of the, of the auxiliary port? Well, to go over that, Let's take a look at this diagram. And here we have pretty much what we looked at earlier, but we've added the link to the production network on router A. And let's say for whatever reason, you cannot access router A. It is off the network. Well, oftentimes these days, the auxiliary port connected to a modem, which is then connected to a POTS line, is used for what is known as out-of-band access to a device. In other words, if you can't access the device via your normal production management network, you can then go ahead and dial into the router via the auxiliary port, which enables you to then administer it and help you troubleshoot. So this is considered out of band because it is separate from your actual production network. It's a separate way to access this device. And it can be very useful in an outage scenario when you cannot actually access a device. Okay, so that is the router auxiliary port. Thanks for watching.